You can't hardly draw up March Madness drama any better than what we saw today in Indianapolis. Bohannon, buzzer beater, bubbles bursting, ball don't lie. This is postseason basketball at its finest. I will beat Indiana in their only meeting in the regular season. But this game was all in favor of Jimmy Chitwood in the first half. Trace Jackson Davis puts his team in front 13 to 3. I was starting a little bit slow, just like they did yesterday against Rutgers. I will finally get the lead late in the first half. Keegan Murray in transition. Finishing the foul. Keegan with 32 points today. Second half. This is where it gets interesting. Iowa down three. Bohannon. Fire at will. Tied at 71. Jabo had 12 points today. All from behind the arc. Under a minute left. Here goes that bad, bad man. Jordan Bohannon. Jordan Buckets. The Big Ten's all-time three-point leader. Gives Iowa a four-point lead. They're up by two with under 40 seconds left. Just trying to burn some clock, but Indiana pokes the ball away. Xavier Johnson with a wide open layup ties the game at 77 with under 30 seconds left. Iowa will get the last shot. You know it's got to be in the hands of Keegan or Jabo. Not sure this is how they draw it up, but Bohannon gets it. Yanks it almost from the logo. A banker beats the buzzer off the window. Bohannon. Puts the win in window, the 452nd three-pointer of his career. None bigger than that one. Bohannon already an Iowa legend, and now the protagonist of a play that Hawkeye fans will never forget. Something that can't even be put into words. You know, you dream about it as a little kid, throwing up shots in the backyard, throwing up shots at the you know local YMCA when you're a kid, and hoping one day you get to this stage. And um, you know, it, it's I, I was running in circles. I didn't know where to go because I was so excited. You know, it's being that moment. Iowa still got one more to go tomorrow, 2.30 on CBS against Purdue. Boilers beat Iowa twice in the regular season. It's going to get wild tomorrow in Indy. Iowa State women in the Big 12 semis against Texas. The Horns swept the clones in the regular season. The long ball is working in KC. Ashley Jones lines it up and knocks it down. Cyclones up 23-20. Late in the half, Lexi Donarski this time. Iowa State was 11 of 21 from the land of plenty against Texas. With 30 seconds left in the game, Iowa State down two. A great pass down low to Beatrice Jordao. We're going to overtime. Tied at 63, down by three in the extra session. Jordao cans her first three-pointer of the season. Cyclones are scrapping, but in the end, just not enough. Texas pulls away an OT. Iowa State still very possibly could host a couple of games in the tournament next week. You and I's men are NIT bound, but the women still have a shot at the dance. MVC semifinals against Missouri State, playing from behind. Carly Rucker hits the jumper to her 18 points. They were down almost the entire first two and a half quarters, hooping the harm on Cam Finley. And from there, you and I just kind of taste control over the final 15 minutes. Four players finishing double figures. You and I advances to play Illinois State in tomorrow's conference title game. One more win, and we'll have three women's tournament teams here in Iowa. Let's check in on the NAIA Women's Tournament. Clark beats Mid-American Christian and the Pride are into the round of 16 in Sioux City. Ten straight wins now for Clark. They'll face Marion out of Indiana in the round of 16 next Friday. In Upper Iowa, just the third time the Peacocks have ever played in the regional tournament. They have never won a tourney game until today. The Peacocks advance to the regional semifinals, essentially the same as the NCAA second round. They'll go up against Augustana tomorrow night. And finally, just down the road at the Alliant Energy Powerhouse. It's the Division III Wrestling Finals. Wartburg, the traditional powerhouse at the powerhouse. They've only got one guy in the finals. That's Zarin Tarakina, a junior out of Hawaii, going up against the defending champion, Jordan James out of Mount Union. That's Matt Campbell's alma mater, by the way. James comes out and gets an early takedown in the first period, has the lead, and he's going to hang on to it. Not much action. He got a warning for stalling late in the match. Tarakina just runs out of time. James wins a 3-2 decision, and Tarakina ends his season as the 141-pound runner-up. But the Knights still claim the team title by a single point, 79-78 over Wabash. It's Warburg's 15th all-time national title. We will have some national champs returning to Eastern Iowa, though. The Loris women's indoor track and field team today crowned the Division III national champions. First ever indoor title for the team. They won an outdoor title last spring. The Dewhawks won four events, four by four. Alyssa Fadenhauer won the open four. And Cassie Parker, product of Clayton Ridge High School, becomes just the third Division III woman to ever sweep the 3K and 5K. Women's track is the only team sport at Loris to ever win a natty. 
There are so many reasons to love our fair state of Iowa that we don't need to focus on the fact that on the last day of April, it's 51 degrees, rainy and windy. One of our many charms can be found right here at the world famous Drake Relays, where we still run the shuttle hurdle relay, one of the few meets left in the country to still put this event on. And today the home state advantage is alive and real for the Hawkeyes, anchored by an Iowa native, Grat Reed. That's G-R-A-T-T, -T, Grat, not Grant. This anchor leg spells victory for Iowa in 56.74 seconds. It's been a long time coming, man. I'm from Iowa. It's been four years since I've been to the Drake Relay since high school, man. So that's why I'm here today. we got a really talented team. We knew we could get the job done if we just went and executed our race. i got a great group of guys with me. Um, and I think we just went out and did what we needed to do to win. Iowa specializes in specialty races, apparently. The sprint medley is another one you'll almost never see at the college level. This relay team of Reed, Colin Jefferson, Genoa McIver, and Alex Still has never once competed in this event before today. First time any squad from Iowa has run a sprint medley since 2019. And again, fittingly, it's a native Iowan, Alex Still. In the final race of his career at Drake Stadium, he anchors the Hawks to a win in three minutes 18.06 seconds. Growing up this is the meet you dream of running at especially for the Hawkeyes I mean I dream of running for the Hawks since I was in fifth grade and to cross the finish line my last race ever at Drake it's a great feeling to share with these guys too. Yeah. Down at the high school level in the girls 4x800, Dubuque Hempstead has something big cooking today. The Mustangs take their first lead of the race on the third leg. And once they get to the anchor, Brooke O'Brien's got nobody in the rear view mirror. 9-22-28, a season best by more than eight seconds. A Drake Relays title and a new school record breaking a mark that stood for almost 40 years. As soon as I got the baton, I'm like, I have to do this for my team. Yeah. I heard everyone cheering and it just pushed me. I just went as, far, as hard as I can, as hard as I could. Right now we've got a transition from Drake to the draft. Day three of the NFL draft in Las Vegas. Oh, I bet those boys in Vegas only wish they could be in Des Moines right now. Today we see the first Hawkeye taken off the board since Tyler Linderbaum in the first round. Safety, Dane Belton goes 114th overall to the Giants. He's the first Hawkeye drafted by New York since the late Tyler Sash in 2012. And this is the most productive year in the draft for Iowa State since 2001. D-tackle Ayoma Owazarike taken at number 116 by the Broncos. You know what they say, why are sunsets orange? Well, because God must be a Bronco fan. And could Iowa State be taking the U of I's place as tight end U? Charlie Kohler goes to the Ravens late in the fourth round. He's going to be teammates next year with Lunderbaum. We're going to have more updates from draft day and Drake day and bad hair day tonight at 9 and 10. Reporting from a windy blue oval in Des Moines, this is Owen Sebring, Iowa's News Now Sports. Today the sun shines on Kinnick Stadium in what might be the nicest day of the year of our Lord 2022. The fans are allowed through the gates at Kinnick to get their first glimpse of this year's football team. The Hawkeyes don't do a typical spring game as you see at some schools, especially down in the SEC. Just a spring practice where fans get to see who's taking reps as a starter and what young players might be coming up to fill holes left in the roster after last season. And one of those biggest holes, both literally and figuratively, is left by Tyler Linderbaum. He's going to get drafted into the NFL next weekend. Logan Jones is moving across the line from defense to offense. And right now is the projected starting center. He's even got Linderbaum's number 65 jersey on. And he knows there's a lot of expectations around Linderbaum's replacement. It's not just like what he did on the field. I mean, in the in the locker room, everything. He's, I mean, he's a Remington Trophy winner. You'd think he's like some god, but no, he comes in, he's humble. I mean, you just look up to people like him. Yeah, you know, Logan played a lot of center today. Uh, you think about it, that's his 15th practice playing offense. I know he played in high school, but uh, he does a lot of things pretty, again, that word instinctively, naturally, but... He has a knack of, like, you know, fitting in in the right places and doing the right things. Another potential question mark for this fall is the kicking game. Today, practice, you saw maybe about half of the kicks go through the uprights. Aaron Blom and Drew Stevens are the two potential guys right now. Coach Ferris knows this would be an uphill battle to find Caleb Shudak's replacement. They did a pretty good job during the spring, but the consistency is going to be the issue. And because I think they're both capable, but they don't have the consistency level right now. And then, you know, we are going to play in, in games conditions like this most likely sometime next fall, or not, if not every week. So, going to have to learn that too. And you know, it's a whole different discussion. It hasn't been a great spring weather-wise. You're telling me, Kirk. Well, for what it's worth, the sophomore Aaron Blom is listed as a starter on the latest depth chart. The Hawkeye season kicks off September 3rd at Kinnick against South Dakota State. 
After 61 games, the final spot in the USHL playoffs will literally be decided by game number 62. The Rough Riders and Team USA entered Saturday with 60 points each and just one spot remaining in the postseason bracket. The Raiders are hosting Dubuque tonight. The Saints are already into the playoffs. They'll be the two seed in the East. Tied at one in the second when Jake Percival sends a clapper past Dubuque's keeper. USHL's second leading score has the boys in green up 2-1. But with time winding down in the period, Austin Oravets drops a floater across the crease. Just his second goal of the season ties the game at two. It doesn't really matter because Team USA lost tonight, so the Riders were in anyway, but just for good measure. They get the 4-3 win in OT over Dubuque. Ranking a college baseball team is apparently a challenging task. There are six different polls used through NCAA.com, and five of them don't even have Rutgers ranked in the top 25, but Collegiate Baseball Newspaper has the Scarlet Knights ranked number eight in the country. So for Iowa, a top 10 win is a top 10 win. They won game one last night this afternoon, trying to take the series against a top 10 program, if we're calling them that. Already with a 1-0 right lead in Callahan's the third. Keaton Anthony ropes an RBI 10, double to the short porch the in right field. Michael Seegers scores Seagers from second, one of three third. runs for him today. He's now we go into the fifth and inning, and you've got the freshman laying down bunts. Sam Peterson, Peterson drops a beauty down the, down the third baseline. Third Nobody beauty. expects the Peterson bunt. He reaches first safely, and Anthony scores to make it 4-0. Bases are full of Hawkeyes in the sixth. Here's Peterson again to the plate, puts a little bit more behind this one, drives in two more runs. Three RBI today for Peterson. Iowa wins by 10. This will be their first series win over a top 10 team since the 2018 season. Kirkwood's baseball team is number 10 in the country. No debate about that. They've won eight of the last 10 as they host Iowa Lakes, and this very quickly turns into a home run derby. Bottom of the second, Kale Frost. Probably not a home run nine times out of 10, but that wind was pushing these balls out in a hurry. Bounces off the mesh monster in center field. But this ain't Fenway. That's a home run for the Eagles. Frost third of the season. All right, so let's go to the third. Chase Mosley already leads the team in home runs, and this is only going to up the ante even more. Already his second of the game, 6-2. Kirkwood, after three innings, every run has been scored off of long balls so far. Okay, now we go to the fourth inning. It's about to get frosty again out at the Kirkwood campus. Kale Frost only had two home runs this season coming into the day, and he hits three in just the first four innings against Iowa Lakes. This fourth inning was a nightmare for the Lakers. Now here's Mosley again at the plate in the fourth. You think that little swirly finger on the second base umpire needs some ice after day? Nearly in constant motion this afternoon. Mosley today goes three for three with three home runs, seven RBI, now 16 round trippers this season. That's the most in all of Juco baseball. The Eagles bang out eight home runs in just four innings this afternoon. The last coming off the bat of Alex Pendergast. That's enough to end it on the mercy rule. 17 to five in five innings. The Eagles won game two 17 to seven behind another four home runs. Grand total 16 home runs between the two squads in the doubleheader today. On the softball diamond, UNI collects its 11th straight win today. This game was scoreless going into the fifth inning, but the Panthers rally for eight runs with two outs. Emmy Wells ends it with a walk-off grand slam. The Panthers have a chance to take the series against one of the better teams in the conference tomorrow afternoon. Good evening, Mitch. Hello from the Eastern Time Zone in a land flowing with ranch and buffalo wings, I suppose. Well, Hawkeye fans have been flooding into the city of good neighbors for the past 48 hours, but there's one family that has its feet firmly entrenched into two different camps, and the gap between those two is about as wide as the Niagara River right down the road, if you'll allow a local aphorism. Now, Hawkeye fans, of course, will remember Greg Stokes, who played for the Hawkeyes in the early 80s. Well, his son, Darius Stokes, he also played for Iowa about a decade ago. He was part of Coach Fran's first ever recruiting class, but now Darius is a video coordinator for the Richmond basketball team. He'll be facing off against his former team and former coach in about 16 hours. I was very excited, you know, having played there, dad having played there. Um, when I saw Iowa come up as a five seed, I'm like, gosh, well, they're going to make us come up as a 12 seed. And sure enough, you know, there it was. So, uh, you know, it's just a, just a great experience. I'm really excited for the opportunity to, you know, see all those guys. I know I um, actually got the chance to, to kind of talk with them because they were at our shoot around before us. So I got the chance to, to talk with all those guys again and, um, you know, just love those guys. Now everybody's wondering, how is Greg forming his allegiance? Is black and gold blood thicker than Stokes' family blood? Here's what Darius has to say. My dad said, you know, family blood over everything. So I know everyone's asking him, you know, who you're rooting for, the Hawkeyes, the Spiders. He's like, come on, now I got to go for my son, got to go for the Spiders. So. 
The treachery of it all. Can you believe it? Either that or Greg is just telling Darius that to help him sleep better at night. Well, we're going to have more from the Hawkeyes. Highlights and reaction tomorrow night. Jets got a preview of tomorrow's game against Richmond later this evening in the show. Reporting from Buffalo, this is Owen Sebring, Iowa's News Now Sports.